So thank you for the opportunity. And it is an extreme honor to be here to present about Hungarian family policy. Uh, thank you to the organizers, New Direction, to all our Croatian friends, Mr. Bartolica, congratulations for organizing this event. So it is, as it is, has been mentioned, I am uh, representing the Center for Fundamental Rights, the biggest Hungarian conservative think tank. And uh, we, in the past few days, have been hearing about the culture war that has been going on in Europe a lot. And you will find our center in the front lines of that battle. We are um, operating under the motto of nation, Christianity, and common sense, which obviously makes us the rebels of current Europe. We are extremely threatening to the progressives because we are also engaging in international reach out and international connection building and uh, to build the national forces internationally cooperating. That's why we organized CPEC Hungary, uh, which is becoming the international hub of conservatives all over the world. So Hungary is uh, offering to be the cultural hub for true conservatives. So all of us are, all of us and all of true conservatives are very welcome there. So we are here to discuss demography. This raises several problems, but the main problem is that it cannot be discussed as an individual topic on its own. It is not just a social, but a political matter, and political matters are interconnected. You will agree with me that if a person says that immigration is not connected to cancel culture, he's probably a political illiterate. So family policy that I'm going to talk about is also interdependent with other highly politicized issues, such as immigration, neo-Marxist cancel culture, LGBTQ propaganda, and woke progressivism. So these all represent a soft power to put pressure on nations, on families, and on human relations that we regard as normal. These topics may seem separate, but they are complementing each other, thus becoming a well-organized and well-designed attack on our way of life, on our values, on our identities, and ultimately on our nationhood. So when I've been asked to present to you uh, the family policy of the conservative Hungarian government, I was aware that presenting facts and figures is is not enough simply, because this cannot be discussed without the complex political and cultural background and factors that have contributed to the current situation. I will give you, give you some facts and figures though, uh, which are quite promising. And uh, Hungary has implemented some truly innovative measures and um, they seem to work. And what is most important that several countries have started to copy us and we are very happy to offer a template and to lead the way in this field. So one could talk about the success of Hungarian family policy simply by mentioning the most important and most conspicuous piece of data, the fertility rate. 10 years ago, the fertility rate in Hungary was 1.23. Ten years later, uh, the fertility rate is 1.59. So looking at the figures only, um, that is an increase of 30% in 10 years. And since then, it's even more. So it is a tremendous achievement in a decade. So um, that is something to be proud of. But then again, um, we still have a long way to go. Uh, the negative demographic trends hasn't been reversed yet. We are still not growing, just as Croatia and Spain is, does not. Um, and what is even more concerning is that we are facing huge adverse powers when trying to, de uh, to stop the demographic decline. So here we propose to talk about causes and possible solutions. So let us take the causes first, very briefly. I would venture to say that the first and foremost cause for the demographic decline is the zeitgeist itself, the spirit of the time. So European people have lost their vitality, lost their faith, lost their self-confidence. They're not willing to fight for what rightfully belongs to them and to their families. And this all has been best described more than a hundred years ago 
in The Decline of the West by Oswald Spengler. Of course, it has been much debated in academic circles, but regardless of the fact whether it's theoretically right or wrong, what we do see around us is the symptoms that he described. So no human community can make a progress or expand if it has lost faith in its future, if it questions its own identity, if it, um, if it has doubts that they are right. And the problem with this, with this is that in other words, the most important element of this, if they lose the element of sacrality from their culture. And this is what we experience if we take a look around Europe. So <coughs> Central Eastern Europe is practically the last remaining place in the whole continent where religion is still alive, where men are still men and women are still women and there are no, there's no question about it. Of course, okay, I see some Spanish people over here and they are also fighting a good fight, but looking at it in general, uh, the Western European societies are raised and brainwashed in the left liberal agenda of remorse and self-hatred. So there's no surprise that they simply lost the wish to biologically reproduce themselves. And this is what will reflect in statistical figures. Um, the decline of the West might be the theoretical framework um, and the explanation of the current situation that's been going on in Europe. But let us not just blame the eternal rules that come and bring down all cultures, according to Spengler. Because we do have the NGOs and do have the interest groups to actively work on that decline. And uh, they are working very hard in every field, as we have heard about it in the past few days in the media, in the entertainment business, uh, in the media everywhere. Let us quickly take one more example, uh, a case study of the German deal between uh, the Allied powers and Germany after the Second World War, because it's very an insightful example. The deal was like this. We will help you reconstruct your country. We will give you welfare and economic power that you've never experienced before. We only ask one thing in return, <clears throat> your soul. So um, you have to forget your history. You for have to forget your tradition, your identity. Nation is an evil word. It is a taboo. And uh, later, that has already been mentioned by Prime Minister Janssen yesterday, later the extremely harmful uh, influence of the Frankfurt School was also added to this very bad balance. So Germany has signed up for that deal. And they truly managed to believe that uh, that their family and their nation comes first is 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 a non-negotiable and uh, and because that is racist if you think that your family and your nation comes first it's racist they truly believed it's according to some fake new morality and that ultimately led to the willkommen kultur we all know children are too much trouble yes we need labor for our economy but you can always import it can't you and um we may like it or not but germany is Europe's main economic driving force. So the social and cultural developments taking place there will radiate across the border. So it's not just about the German. If they decide to commit demographic suicide, it will not stop at the borders. So the low, low birth rate all over Europe is also in direct connection in, with uh, consumerism, individualism, and atomized society, as we heard in the previous days. Um, let me quickly mention Michel Hulbeck here, whom we all know, but unfortunately too few of us actually read. It's highly recommended. It's added to the recommended books. It's not the technical professional type of book recommendation, but the real literature, it's also quite useful. So um, going back to the topic, caring for children and caring for your old parents will decrease your living standards. Therefore, family ties has to be destroyed. That's what they say, of course. Cancel culture, woke ideology, and LGBT are only means to destroy your culture, means to destroy your identities and your family values. They are so absurd that normal people don't take them seriously, though, yet they are very strongly promoted all over from um, TikTok to Euronews, you name it. And as we also heard it yesterday, make no mistake about it, their role is not to build a new world, but to destroy the old one, to destroy everything that we hold dear. 
In the 90s, Croatia has fought a war for its statehood. Today, the children of those, ch the children of those fighters have to realize that uh, subversive, progressive ideologies are threatening the very same nationhood that their fathers have been fighting for. We have a Hungarian saying the tanks went out, the banks came in. Spain also has a long tradition of fighting for its identity ever since the Reconquista through the Carlist Wars. Let me just quote very quickly without getting too political, just for the text, the Marcha de Oriamendi, defendiendo la bandera de la Santa Tradición, defending uh, the flag of the sacred tradition that kind of speaks for itself. And as for us Hungarians, um, contrary to what the word believes, in the 1956 revolution, we did not simply rise against communism, but against the communist lies and propaganda, the whole complexity of it, which tried to transform our identities. And that propaganda was just as absurd as the neo-Marxist propaganda of today, um, now disguised in some fake liberalism for the time being, but who knows what's next. So however, times change and the weapons employed against our identities and our values also change. So we must adapt to a new game. And so we finally come to the question, what can be done? The conservative government of Hungary has designed an action plan to support families and has been implementing it since 2010. In its attempt to stop demographic decline, Hungary has, de has devised a complex scheme of financial and legal support for young families. The Hungarian government allocates 6% of the GDP to family support measures, which is around twice the average of developed countries. That shows the ambitious nature of the plan, doesn't it? Uh, the Hungarian model is unique as the EU promotes and actively supports immigration as a response to Europe's demographic catastrophe. We all see that masses of people are imported uh, they are not familiar with nor have the slightest sympathy for European culture and habit. Um, they are, it's not in their right mind to integrate in any sense. So that's why Hungary has chosen a different path. We think that the right answer to the demographic crisis is not immigration, but to support our families to have all the children they wish for. As our Prime Minister Viktor Orban put it very clearly, I quote, we subscribe to the view that the demographic problems must be solved by relying on our own resources, by mobilizing our own reserves, and by our own spiritual renewal. The essence of the Hungarian family policy are the various allowances, grants, and benefits for young adults. Again, to support them to have all the children they actually wish for, um, and so that they're wish to have children not be subject to financial considerations. This seems to have attained its goal because since 2010, when the incumbent government entered office, the number of marriages has doubled and the number of abortions was reduced to half. The starting point of the support system is marriage. So every young married couple is entitled to an annual, annual tax credit for the first two years of the marriage. The so-called baby bond is the most popular government bond, uh, which offers an interest premium of three percentage points above inflation, so it's inflation proof. Another important financial help is the childbirth incentive loan, and uh, it is for young married couples, married couples. And under this scheme, um, candidates can apply for an interest-free loan of up to around 25,000 euros. Repayment of the loan is postponed by three years after the birth of the first child. And then, if the second child is born, 30% of the total amount is waived. And at the third child, the full amount um, of the loan is waived. So if you have three children, you don't pay it back. Uh, the home buyer's allowance is a non-reimbursable grant for the purchase or the construction of a property, of a house. To be eligible, parents must have or undertake to have at least one child. Coupled with the allowance, 
um, one can apply for a bank loan with a state subsidized interest rate um, that is called the home buyer's loan. A family with two children is eligible for a loan of 25,000 euros, while a family with three or more children are eligible for 36,000 euros. Furthermore, the repayable amount of the loan is reduced with the birth of each child that is born to the family. So, for instance, if uh, a family has three children, then the amount to be repaid is around 14,000 euros less. To have a better understanding of the magnitude of this governmental support, um, combining the childbirth incentive loan, uh, the home buyer's allowance and the home buyer's loan, a family or a young couple undertaking to have three children can get access to an amount that is enough for buying a detached family house. Um, and if they do have the three children indeed, the amount that they have to repay is only about the third of the total sum. Um, and even that with extremely advantageous interest rates. But Hungarian family policy does not stop there, sorry. Uh, the financial support is provided all along the period of raising the children. Um, Hungary devotes particular attention to families with young children. Uniquely in Hungary, uh, in the first six months after giving birth to a child, mothers get more infant care allowance than their pre-birth earnings. Also, the special child care benefit package offers increased financial support for mothers caring for young children who choose to return back to work. That's an important measure to, to support work-life balance for mothers. After giving birth to her fourth child, a mother will never have to pay personal income tax again. And according to, and according to the newest uh, element of the family support system, the same thing applies for young mothers under the age of 30. So they are also exempt from paying personal income tax. And one of the most prominent pillars of the conservative government's family policy uh, is the family tax credit. Uh, the, its guiding idea is that there should be no difference in the living standards of families with similar incomes, but different number of children. So consequently, large families pay less tax uh, on the same income than those who have fewer children or who are childless. So, for fear that the Hungarian model is taken over by other countries, the EU has retaliated by political means against Hungary, withholding the EU funds due to Hungary, and also launching groundless allegations that Hungary has rule of law issues. Uh, starting legal procedures against Hungary under various pretexts. They are not even really shy admitting that these measures have nothing to do with the real state of rule of law in Hungary because they never cared about it in the first place. They are fully politically motivated attacks. Several informal declarations have let us know that uh, we'll get no development funds from Brussels as long as we pursue the conservative policy uh, in terms of family matters and immigration matters. So seeing the permanent attacks on our family values and our family policies, and also seeing the gaining ground of the, of the gender lobby, hun Hungary felt that financial help and financial measures are not enough. This policy must get legal protection as well. Hence, we passed the Child Protection Act of June 2021. It has provoked large-scale international campaign and attracted charges of homophobia and intolerance, of course. Hungary was accused of curtailing the freedom of speech because it interdicts the propaganda of sex change surgery and um, alternative sexual lifestyles, so to speak, in schools. So the Hungarian law states that the physical and mental health of children is a priority and that sexual education is exclusively the prerogative of their parents. So Hungary considered it necessary to um, protect the traditional family values in the fundamental law, thus giving it uh, constitutional level protection. 
Um, in the fundamental law, there is a reference passage that is often quoted in the Hungarian public discourse. Every child has the right to a father and a mother. The fundamental law states that family is based on the marriage of a man and a woman, one of each. Um, and the fundamental law states that family, that, um, the mother, okay, this, here comes the interesting part. The fundamental law also states that the mother is a woman and the father is a man. That tells a lot about the current situation. So, so allow me to conclude this presentation on a more easygoing note as uh, our Croatian friends are said to have a keen sense of humor similar to us Hungarians. So we are really living in a world where you must establish it by the constitution that the mother is a woman. We are also living in a world where the EU withho withholds your development money because you won't let drag queens go into kindergarten, uh, preach about alternative sexual habits and practices. It's actually quite practical. Uh, so the EU we are living in is really the world of Samuel Beckett and or, or the Monty Python. Um, and it can be a lot of fun to watch if you are not a member of the EU. But if you are, then it's trickier. So some years ago, some years ago, not a long time ago, we used to defend the values of conservatism. But by now, we are only defending the values of normality. Thank you.